heading over to our Sea Wolves things. Continue to roll on for the Sea Wolves. They would defeat the Chicago Hounds on May 20th with a score of 35 to 13. Our player of the match, JP Smith. Um, Smith, one try scored, five points scored. So not the, the biggest in terms of the tries uh, necessarily. What in the world? Oh, I wonder if that's new. I don't know if MLR is. I'm, I'm sitting here trying to, to check some stats on the MLR website, and they've got the Miami Sharks logo up. I don't know if that's been confirmed. I don't know if that's something I'm learning on the fly. Um, but it would be Seattle's fourth straight victory. My apologies. Fourth straight victory. Um, JP Smith, yes, one try scored, five points scored, 220 kicking, me kicking meters, nine tackles made, and 70 running meters on the day. So a nice sort of overall game for JP Smith in the, you know, this is a game against Chicago. Chicago struggled in their first year in MLR. Seattle had to take care of business here. And three of the last four matches have been Seattle needing to do that. Great tune-up opportunities for the Sea Wolves after a tough Two uh, two game losing streak um, in the middle there against two good teams in the Western Conference. You know, Chicago. You know, again they've struggled to begin their existence in MLR. Houston, that was a big comeback victory against one of, at the time, the third team in the Western Conference. I believe now Utah has overtaken them for that spot in the West. Uh, Dallas, Dallas has struggled in their two years of existence in the MLR. Uh, that was a big win in April. Um, and then against Toronto on the road, they had to come back a little bit for that one on the road up, up in the great North. Um, but they were able to still take care of business there. Yeah. I'm very interested. I'm sorry. I'm very interested to see if that, um, <laughs> if that Miami Sharks news is official yet, because, I haven't seen anything about that. That's that's something to worry about on my own time um, because I know the MLR is really trying to expand heavily um, in the next few years. <coughs> no, they have a website and everything. Okay. Oh, this was not just – oh. MLR did not really market that very well. Okay. <laughs> um, I, this this was a match. I, I I wouldn't take too much stake into it. This is one that Seattle really needed to take care of business in, uh, like the last three of the last four, as I mentioned against Dallas, against uh, da uh, Toronto. There we go, um, and they were able to do so. You know, this was something that they needed to do. Uh, they're still without Rico Tatting, so it's good that they have these matches that he's recovering now where it's not this like important stretch where they need to beat Utah or beat Houston. Uh, they got these little tune-up games essentially out of the way, and it's still vague. You know, the the recovery timeline is end of the regular season, which that could be in two matches. It could be the last match, you know, against San Diego in the finale. And there's there's no clear timeline for that. Um, you play Old Glory next, which I mean, they were they gave them they gave Seattle a fight last year. Um, but, yeah, you've got those tune-up games, and that was kind of it. That was probably your easiest stretch of the regular season because now things are going to get serious. Because you've got Old Glory here, who sits at second in the Western Conference. Um, there's, their record's even not that great. I mean, there's one really scary team, I guess you could say, in the East, and Seattle will play them the – uh, second to last match of the regular season. Well, it's at home too, so that's good. Uh, that'll be a big bout. But Old Glory, the second best team in the Eastern Conference, Utah, who has now taken third, third in the West. Uh, Seattle's good in the West, unlike John Morant, um, who you lost to earlier in the regular season. So you have to avenge that loss against Utah if you want to get any sort of inkling of catching up to San Diego, who's first in the Western Conference, which that's considering that there's the considering how they've rolled along this season it's unlikely unfortunately um so second team in the eastern conference next week third team in the western conference the week after first in the east after that and then the first in the west to finish out the regular season it's not going to be an easy stretch <coughs> especially the fact that the seals are without their captain so, you know, as I mentioned, nice to have that stretch of the regular season that was the easiest to get that tune-up in 
to to really get back in and get some momentum building. But these next few matches are where things are getting important in terms of seeding and, and momentum heading into the playoffs. Uh, you don't want to come in like a, a rudderless plane going into the playoffs. So it's going to be a big stretch here moving forward. It's nice to have these games where you're able to build things up and move forward positively with momentum. But things are going to get really serious in the next few weeks for our Seawolves. So as I mentioned, looking ahead, the Seawolves sit at a 10-2 and record on the regular season with 49 standings points against second in the league and second in the Western Conference. Uh, the next matchup is May 27th at Old Glory, uh, which is a 3 p.m. start, which isn't in our nation's capital, if you can't tell by the logo there. Um, that one, I know it's always interesting uh, where to watch these, but if you go to the website, therugbynetwork.com, it's all one word. They are the official, essentially, streaming partner of MLR and the easiest way, and they're free to watch these Seawolves games. I do it best when they're on the road. 